Welcome back to the pre-press class, Fullerton College Print Department uh, project number one tutorial on InDesign and placing lots of files and uh, creating our playing card deck. This is hopefully the last of this little mini series. You can see on my screen right now that everything looks pretty bad. We're seeing very low resolution images. Look at how horrible that looks. I mean, what is this, Atari? No offense, Atari. I loved you when you were good. Um, anyways, this is a view change. If you go up to the top and go to view display performance, there's fast, typical, and high quality. If I say high quality display, you see perfectly clear examples of exactly how good the images look. If I do view display performance fast display, you get gray boxes telling you that there are pictures there, but not showing you what they are. The one I typically go with pun intended, is typical display because it doesn't waste as much time. This is a time-saving computer processing power saving measure introduced by InDesign. Actually, I think it was originally introduced by Quark Express, but in these types of page layout softwares, the idea being you don't necessarily need to see the quality of every single image every single time you load your pictures onto your screen. Anytime your computer shows you, the user, uh, an image, it's using RAM. It's using memory, it's using processing power to show you that image instead of using that power to actually do what it's supposed to be doing to create. So to save time and not have to waste as much uh, resources on showing a user what's going on inside the computer, you can get a preview version, or if you're really, really good at knowing what you're working with or desperate to get something output that's too high resolution or too memory intensive, you can use those gray boxes and just trust that you remember what's in them Anyways, I'll go back to high quality because it makes a better video. And honestly, vector pictures of playing cards isn't exactly going to crash this system. That's me knocking on my wooden desk because you never know. Okay, so we have them all laid out. These are all the backs of the cards. Let me go ahead and show you the last bit of this here. I'm going to export and make a PDF. This is an important process for you in printing and in this class. In this class, since we're online, we're going to have to turn in printable PDFs as most of our turn-ins for our assignments, rather than printing them out. Uh, with the option that if we get a chance to get into the lab, even if I can go by myself, uh, I can print out some of the stuff for us. Let's go ahead and do the export. You go to File, Export, or Command E, because I like my shortcuts. Shortcuts are good. Learn your shortcuts. Export lets me choose what folder it's going to go to on my computer. I'll drop it back into the same one I'm working in, although I need to show you better file management than this. Honestly, this is a bit hypocritical for me just to dump it in one box right now, but for expedience, Adobe Print PDF, save. Now you have a whole bunch of different possibilities. I like high quality print when I'm actually gonna produce it. Most of the settings that come default on this are good. I'm also now gonna go down here to marks and bleeds, and I'm gonna add some marks. Don't click all printers marks. Nobody likes that. However, crop marks is helpful. And lastly, under bleed and slug, click on use document bleed settings. It should light up, or not light up, should be the opposite. It should gray out because it's now choosing whatever settings you made your design with. And it says 0.125, which is perfection. One eighth of an inch bleed is industry standard. Nobody is going to reject a job if you give it an eighth inch bleed for bleed reasons. That's just correct, it's standard. Some places can work with less, some places may ask for more, but I've never heard anyone, nor have I ever complained of getting an eighth inch bleed. So using the document bleed settings here is a good way of making sure that you had enough bleed going on. So let's go ahead and hit export. Oh no, some of the fonts aren't available. It will tell you if they're not there. I don't have any fonts being used in here, so I'm going to go ahead and let it go. There's a, if you look at your SVG file, there's a huge section of text in the top about attribution and who made it. That section is not in the printable area, so if those fonts aren't there, it's not going to hurt your file. Now, if we navigate our way through our finder, or your Windows if you're on a Windows system. I'm not judging. I've worked on Windows as well in InDesign, and it works just as well, as long as you remember where you are and whether you're holding down the command or control key when you're doing your sheet keyboard shortcuts. 
So now I have my playing cards.pdf. I'll open it up and show you what it looks like that we just made. And zero, make it fit in as you scroll from page to page. You've got, you can go through and make sure that all the cards are present. Um, most people, I believe, are familiar with a standard 52 card playing card deck. If not, uh, you can compare it to your original document to make sure all the different suits and numbers and kings and queens are all there. You also notice in the corners, you have the crop marks of where it's going to get trimmed down if you print it out and cut it out. And if you hover your mouse in the bottom left corner of your screen, you will get the overall size of this sheet, including the bleed area. So it should be bigger than the space that you have made because it allows room for the crop marks to be fully visible. Now back in InDesign, we're gonna make a gang up sheet and we're gonna impose multiple cards per sheet. As you probably know, and you should have learned by now in this class, a playing card is two and a half inches wide by three and a half inches tall. There's a bunch of reasons we're not gonna print that size exactly. You can't, most presses cannot feed a sheet of paper that small. And if you printed only one of these on an eight and a half by 11 or worse larger sheet, you are wasting time and paper and therefore money and profits and making your business die. So let's look at the standard practice of imposition. I'm gonna make a new document here in InDesign. I'm gonna go for, let's just say tabloid for today. Um, so it's gonna be 11 by 17, we'll do portrait orientation. Don't worry about bleed, you don't need it this time. Don't worry about margins, they don't mean anything. We'll start with one page and see if we need to add more. Say okay. Now here, we're gonna build some more frames to place a file. So we're gonna place the file we just exported. So we're gonna make a 3.75 by, whoops, I'm wrong, 2.75 by 3.75 inch rectangle. And then we're going to, you hold down option, you'll see that your cursor becomes two arrows and we're gonna, holding down option, we're gonna drag, click and drag to the right to make another copy of it. Then we do command option four, Oop, I don't know why I did that, move this right over. We'll have four of these all the way across. And this can work. Um, this is getting towards the edge of the printable area on my sheet, but it could work. And then I'm going to pull down, with all of those, kind of option drag. If you hold shift, it'll make sure it goes straight, but there are other smart guides that'll help that happen. And that's one too many on the sheet. So I can get 16 cards per page, which means I'm gonna need pay four pages. So I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna option, sorry, I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing. Um, I go into the pages uh, menu. If you don't have it open, it's window pages or command F12. I'm gonna hold on option and drag to copy the spread. I just, the page I just made two, I got four, five pages is more than need, I'll delete the one. Now here's the cool last little bit here and I'll do this once and hopefully this is enough for you. We'll do a click on, actually it doesn't matter, you have to, don't have to click on anything, do file, place, and we're gonna choose that file we just made, the playing cards.pdf. However, don't click open just yet. Instead, hit this beautiful little box here called show import options. And then you hit open and it's gonna bring open a secret menu. You could choose manually which page you want to import from a multi-page document. And good for this project and many others, you can also just say, yeah, give me all the pages. We're not gonna do, uh, play with the options of what we're cropping to, not this time. Say okay. You click and it goes into one of the boxes. Click again, it goes into the next box, and the next box, and the next box, and the next one, and the next one. I'll just do one page for us here for demo reasons. You guys can just keep on going. You can place an entire catalog of hundreds of pages. It'll be tedious and your finger will be tired of clicking, but you can do it. So I dropped what I'm doing. Let me zoom in on this and you can see that with the bleed space we've given, the crop marks we made are visible between the different cards. So when this gets printed out, you'll be able to cut it. And that is how you gang up multiple sheets of one document onto one sheet for printing. Because isn't it better to get all 16 of these cards on one sheet when you print than to have to print 16 sheets of paper to get the same result? I think it's pretty good. Anyways, thanks for joining us. Um, 
signing off for now. Uh, we'll give you more tutorials on things as we keep working. Again, thanks for joining us. Bye.